Welcome to the Liberati Mansion. Welcome to Under the Vegas Sun, looking at the people, the events, and the news surrounding Las Vegas and the entire Vegas Valley. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. We are live from the Liberace Mansion. Las Vegas and Nevada have been known for many things in the past, the entertainment, the casinos. But Las Vegas and the state have become the most diverse state in the nation. What does that mean? And what really can happen when you have such diversity? On our program today, we'll look into not only what the diversity means, but an event that hopefully will spread even more culture about that diversity in the very near future. You'll have a special guest on our program, Kevin Fung. You'll meet him in just a few seconds. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Visha Calderon, an immigration attorney. Migrating to the United States legally can be tricky and costly. My firm offers fast, professional, and cost-efficient service for you and your family. The ever-changing community of Las Vegas. It's one of those things that you don't think about a lot, but when you look at it, sometimes you're amazed. Our very special guest on the program is a man who has not only seen the changes in the community, he has really become a part of those changes. Our very special guest, Mr. Kevin Fung. Welcome, my friend. Thank you, Steve. It's a pleasure. You were the founder of the Asian Cultural Center and the Asian Cultural Alliance. Before I get to that and, and, and what that really means, the amazing growth of the Asian community in Southern Nevada has been something that I don't know if a lot of people would have predicted. In the past 20 years alone, the Asian community has tripled in size according to the latest statistics. Mm -hmm. Did that surprise you? No. Not at all? No. Why? Because our neighbor California have 51% of the Asian population in the United States. And being Las Vegas, that there is so many opportunity, is such a welcoming business community, and it's growing. It's actually, to me, is baby stage. And so there are so many service industry, there is so many, you know, industrial industry, everything that, that it can, it's just, there's a vast opportunity. I mentioned at the beginning of the show mm -hmm. that um, according to the latest information, Nevada has become the most diverse state in the nation. The most diverse. And, and, and when you look at that, and when you look at what that means, we're a growing economy. We're a, we're a growing community. Uh, we've surpassed the uh, the problems that were here in 2007 and 2008. Do you believe that we've surpassed that because of the diversity that this community has grown and put its arms around? Yes, I believe so. Because to me, that on an individual level, I have been talking to people you know, for our, our guests, our tours, what have you. You know, Las Vegas is such a place that you can find everything here. But why is it such a place? You know, people from out of the area, out of the, out of the state, even out of the country, even in Asia, think of Las Vegas as, of course, the gambling mecca of the world, the entertainment capital of the world. But I would not think that that would bring people to believe that it would be a place to reside, a place to move the family to. How has those two things come together? Where we're talking about the Asian community tripling in size in, in 20 years. How has it come together? Well, for one, we have such a wonderful government like our mayor, Caroline, our Commissioner Sisolak, people as such, they are leading this community as a whole. They have visions and they have also trying to make this into a culture capital. So with that, you know, we're not just entertainment only anymore. 
where we have family. And for the last several years, I've been telling people we are all ambassador of the city. I am saying, mm -hmm. um, I believe that as a, as a community grows, it must grow so through its culture. Yes. Las Vegas has grown through its culture. When I first moved to Las Vegas, there was quote unquote very little culture here. We had uh, the beginnings of an opera company. We had the beginnings of a, of a philharmonic. Um, uh, there was no stage productions except very, very small and community theaters. The culture of this community has grown so large that it has helped move the community forward. At the same point, mm -hmm. the culture of the diverse organizations that are in Las Vegas, uh, whatever that organization may be, has become part and participle of, of, of how this community has grown. You founded the Asian Cultural Center, the Asian Cultural Alliance. Was it based upon your belief that if your community has to, will grow, it has to be based on the historical culture of, if I'm not mistaken, 48 different Asian countries that are part of what you do? Well, that's a good question. The thing about it is culture of any nation, they're basically the same. We celebrate family unity, right? We celebrate our society happy events. The only difference is how we celebrate it. And with that difference, it make it easy. The, av the, the, the median income in the Asian community is $61,000. Uh, 19% of all of the students um, will eventually graduate, not only from college, but with a higher degree from college. Is that the culture? Is, is that part of those things that are native to the various 48 countries. But that seems to be universal within the Asian community. Is that part of the culture? That's part of the education. It's the parent who kept on telling their kids, you know what, like my father, I brought you to the best land on the face of the earth. What are you going to do next? What are you going to do to surpass what I did for you, right? So Asian family is like, study, graduate from college or university, then you'll have a, a good job. Why for a community? Tough question, I know. Why for a community mm -hmm. is it so important that the various diverse organizations celebrate their culture? A community is like a fabric. The closer the stitches, the better the community itself as a whole. When the community are doing each, you know, country or race and what have you, when they're doing their own thing, then you become segregated. So when we're teaching each other, why am I celebrating this for? And you're teaching me what you're celebrating that for. When we have an understanding of that, that breaks down the barrier of the differences. There is a time where a lot of people right now are concerned about what could happen in the future. I know that, that you have concerns about uh, what could happen with DACA, and what could happen to dreamers and young people. Mm -hmm. How do you, as founder of a great organization, deal with that, while at the same time, you're dealing with the things to uplift the culture of your community? With DACA, I tell the young people, you have to believe America. 
America is the only country that accept all. Okay. Doesn't matter what president is saying right now. Doesn't matter if it facts is like, you know, the message is not clear. That's how it's that's how it is. There's a cabinet of very smart people. They'll figure out a way. But the con each individual have to understand, this is my country. This is my home. What can I do for my home to make it better? When everyone do that, we will uplift the whole to a whole new level. There are people out there right now watching us who some believe that, that if you weren't born and raised here, if you didn't come here, quote unquote, legally, you shouldn't be here. There are others, of course, that, that feel directly, uh, directly opposite, uh, that feel as though when children come with their families, even though they might have come as a child into this country, they should be allowed to stay. How do you, what do you tell all of those people who say, uh uh, you didn't come here legally, go away? Do you explain to them how the importance of a, each individual can be? Absolutely. Or do you explain to them what's right is right? Here's the thing I'll tell you about myself. When I was born in Taiwan, I was called an outsider because my father came from the mainland when I was born. When I came to America when I was 13, I was called an outsider. I was from China, from Taiwan. No, nobody knew about Taiwan back then. But when I went back to Taiwan to visit for business or what have you, or China, they called me American. Me, individually, all places call you outsider. What do you do? Well, you have to sit where you live, it's your home. And your contribution to the whole, that's what makes it different. With all the kids that already grown up here studying, what have you, they're going to become the top brass of community. How can anybody tell them, say, well, go home? They don't have home to go back to you. They are so adapted to American system. That's what's about. I'm going to take a break for a couple of seconds. When I come back, I want to talk about this major announcement that you just gave to the community that, uh, that seeks to expand the reality of what the Asian culture is all about. So we'll talk about that in just a couple of seconds. So sure. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hello, this is Keith Evans at the Lion Habitat Ranch. We'd like you to come out and visit our ranch. There's 38 lions, a giraffe that paints, ostriches, emus, and birds. We do school tours, general admission, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and behind the scenes tours every day of the week. Besides coming in as general admission, you can also pay extra to help our animals, and you can feed the giraffe. You can feed one of the lions, <coughs> or you can have Ozzy paint a custom canvas for you. You can also buy Ozzy paintings in the gift shop. While we do our demonstrations at 12 and 2 of Ozzy painting, all those canvases are available for purchase. In addition to everything you can do here in person, you can find us on the website, lionhabitatranch.org, where you can make your reservations online or buy your paintings online. Thank you very much. Please come. How important is the diversity to a community, whether that community be Las Vegas, whether it be Henderson, Nevada, whether it be Chicago, whether it be Philadelphia, how important is that diversity? Once again, our very special guest, Mr. Kevin Fung. How important is that diversity? How important is that culture? When, when you go to major cities around the country, whether it be New York City, uh, where there are various different uh, sections of the community that are identified with certain groups of people, or whether it be Phil in Philadelphia, or whether it be any city around the country, there's a certain amount of diversity recognition that is there. We've now seen a beginning of that with the growth of Chinatown uh, within Southern Nevada, within Las Vegas. Um, 
how important is that diversity and that culture going to be to the future of what you see here in Nevada and the city? This is what, I, years back, I was talking with, with a friend. He was the chairman of a very, very famous magazine. I asked him, what kind of culture do we have in Vegas, right? And he said, we have none. We have our money, and that's about it. And in the back of my head, I go, uh-uh. He said, we're about money, and that's it? Yeah, that's it. You know, what, 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 what culture does it have? But I said, no, that's not it, you know. So ever since then, personally, I took on the challenge because at the end of the day, I got thousands of years of history behind. I'm a Chinese by birth, right? But this is my town. This is my town. I love Vegas. You know, I, I've grown up in LA, live in San Diego, but I love Vegas. Why? Freedom. Freedom that we have here. Respect that we have here. You know, I have. You see this emblem I wear is uh, from the sheriff. We have a such a wonderful police department here that they are education all the time. They are on educating, you know, watch how the diverse of community and they all work with each other. And I believe each individual one of them are a family member. So when we talk about diversity, it's like this. If we don't consider that there's a barrier, there won't be a barrier. If you see that individual as your family member, as the whole community, we have over two and a half million people here. When you see them as a whole, it's a family member. Prejudice is not oh, born, that it's taught. Prejudice is not born, it's taught. You just made a major announcement uh, not that long ago yes. that Nevada has become the first state in the nation that will celebrate Asian Cultural Day, May 18th, 2018. Asian yes. Cultural Day. 48 different countries of Asia are going to create a day, not only for themselves, but for the community. I know that you were instrumental in helping to make that happen. Why was that so important? Dr. Martin Luther King, because of one man, one day of celebration, no matter what, it got all African American, all blacks, that's not African American, together, united on that particular day. Because when people have one central focus, one idea of that day, they're more likely to see it. It's just like Christmas. Celebrate on birth of Jesus Christ that day. So day in, day out, Asia have been such so segregated. They go, yeah, they have so much Asians. And th with this, I'd like to share with you what my thought was is, number one, as I grow up, there's two group of people that I have envy, appreciated, and respect. The first group is the ADA, the disability group. They have changed how people respect handicaps. Second group which is gay rights movement. They have changed laws because of unity, Acceptance. right? And the thing is, they're all less than 1%. Asian have 5.6% across the land, but because there's no, no common day or no common you know, uh, uh, goal to go about it, that's why they're so segregated. I grew up in LA. There's Chinatown, it's all Chinese. Uh, there's Korean town, all Korean. 
And when it becomes set like that, you can't change it anymore. So your hope is that to pull in cultures like Afghanistan, um, like Korean, like mm -hmm. Chinese, like Philippine, like all of the Asian, 48 Asian countries, that you believe, from what I understand, mm -hmm. that you can reach a common goal? Yes, we can. And what would that common goal be? The common goal is that we want to share the best of our culture heritage and show it to you that day. We want to educate everyone, our brothers, sisters, neighbors, you know, what's it about that make each click? You and I have talked in the past. And one of the things that's core to you and your belief in spreading this word is English. Absolutely. You believe that English is a critical part of everything. Absolutely. Because we're in America, and English is our national language. To any immigrant that comes to let live in this fine land, if you can communicate what I call equal opportunity, English come first. If you don't, you know, go about and learn, how can you communicate with anybody else? So does, I tell all the people, all the kids that grew up here, black, white, yellow, whoever, you have such opportunity that English is your mother language. You already step forward. Look at all these Asians that came from Asia. They don't speak a word of English. And why are they doing better than you? You have the niche, by but why are they doing better than you? Because they have a goal, I want to be somebody. This is going to be a strange question to ask. Okay. But I think it's an important question to ask. Do you consider yourself first an American? Or do you consider yourself first Chinese? I am a very proud Chinese American because America as a whole is such a young country. There's really no history beside our founding father have such wisdom. Beside that, there aren't any. So we have to bring what's our best from the East and we'll keep what's our best in the West to blend it together. That's why my, 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 my hero, my role model is Dr. Sun, you know, Dr. Sun Yishen, our founding father. Because you have to love everyone equally and may bring the best and blend it together to have a whole new level. And I truly, honestly believe Vegas is the place. Nevada is the first place that we can ever make that change. May 18. Mm -hmm. 2018, um, what is your hope for that day? What is your plan for that day? What is your dream for that day? Is it, is it to bring peoples together, Asian peoples together? Or is it a bigger dream to bring people from around the world here to determine and to figure out how we all live together? and how we share cultures in the future. What is your dream? My dream for Asian Culture Day is this. Level one, to have people come all over America, all over the world, to Las Vegas, to be bigger than Consumer Electronics Show, to bring the best that they have to offer, what I call come to our living room and share and learn and understand. When that's said and done, the world would be much a better place. Level two, economic exchange. We have such a wonderful city, wonderful state tax law and what have you. And Bring the business in. And level three? Level three. We 
in Las Vegas, Nevada, become the capital culture of United States. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yes, we can do it. I know we can do it. Kevin, thank you very much for being with us. Thank um, you. It's been very enlightening, a and and uh, I know how much Asian Cultural Day means to you, and uh, and I thank you for being with us on the, on the program. I truly do. Thank you. May eighteenth, twenty eighteen, is uh, is the time. I would believe that uh, that we'll hear more about this incredible celebration. Uh, to all of you, uh, let me make a challenge. If you see somebody that you don't know, if you know somebody is part of a culture that you don't understand, take it upon yourself to learn. It's important in our world today that we all come together as one. Well. We'll be right back. Stay with us. News. In today's world, news has become even more important in our lives. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. For some 40 years, Las Vegas has been my home, and it's been good to me. Now, I want to give back. That's why I started The Now Report, the independent voice newspaper, fair, balanced, unbiased, online and mobile, and it's free. The time has come for an independent voice because news is important. Now, as I said earlier, it's very, very important, I think, for all of us, this entire society, to get to know the rest of the people in the society, not, not just those you know today, but the various cultures, the various diverse groups that maybe you have never come across before. I really believe that things like an Asian Cultural Day, like all the other cultural days, are very, very important for the growth of not only this community, but all communities at the same time. I think it's important we all take a chance and learn about those that we don't know about. I'm Steve Shore. Until the next time, be safe and enjoy life under the Vegas sun. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. I've been proud to host the TV show Under the Vegas Sun. We've had mayors and entertainers and some of the true movers and shakers of Las Vegas. Well, we're growing again. We'll now be seen in 209 cities in America through our network, Walk TV, as well as in six foreign countries and in Las Vegas. We'll also be seen four times each week on Cox Communications, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m., and now Sundays at 7 p.m. on channels 1096 and 96. I just wanted to say thank you. This has been a presentation of VATV.